Okay, so this is my very first painting video uh, tutorial and I'm gonna do Petunia the pig. Um, so bear with me because uh, <laughs> I haven't done this before. So um, what I've done is I've taken my watercolor paper and I have base coated it in uh, Snow White, Decorate Snow White, um, and then traced the pig pattern over top. Um, I've gotten out all my brushes that I'm going to use and all my paints and I am ready to go. Um, if you've bought the pattern and you want to paint along with me, um, I'm going to do the, everything in the same steps that are in the pattern. And um, yeah, so why don't we get started? So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to paint Petunia. We're going to paint her all in sugared peach. So let me just get that here. Um, so another thing to know is I'm actually fairly new to painting. Um, been maybe a couple years um, and I've tried all sorts of different types of painting and so this is what stuck with me the most is doing animals and that's what I what I love more than than any other kind of painting. So I am totally self-taught. Um, so if you're watching this and you're thinking things like that's not the paintbrush I would use or <laughs> that's not the technique I would use. Um, then you might very well be right that it is uh, it is not what is standard, uh, but it's what works for me. Um, it's what I figured out um, the best for me throughout all of this, and um, yeah. So hopefully that makes sense to you. And I think you know everybody's just quite a bit different. And if you see me doing something and you know you can do the same thing. Um, just using something that you're more comfortable with, then I would suggest that you do that. I think uh, that's what it's all about, is experimenting and trying and finding what's unique to us and what makes us, uh, what works for us. So yeah, I think uh, we should give that a go. So yeah, so I'm just going to paint Petunia up here with uh, all sugared peach. I'm not worrying too much about lines. You'll see that I don't put a lot of water on my brush and I know that it could go further if I did, um, but uh, I, I, painting animals, I find, for the most part, I don't need a lot of, um, a, a lot of water on it. And, and, and ma a matter of fact, in a lot of situations, I find that it actually works poorly. Uh, if I if I do use well, I have too much water, um, the color doesn't go on as nice or in the right sort of shapes or patterns. So in a lot of situations, um, unless I am floating or doing some very fine lines, um, I don't I don't use a lot of I use a lot of water for the most part of it. Yeah. So here we go, I'm almost done. I'm not the fastest painter. Um, like I say, being new to it and doing a lot of experimenting as I go, um, I don't always know what I'm doing when <laughs> I sit down, which I think probably is, uh, for some people, for quite a few people, it's probably not that uncommon. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I find I'm experimenting a lot more um, every time I sit down, I, I just sit down and I'm guessing at what I do until until I get where I want to be and, and uh, at that point and then I'm happy. Uh, this was actually the first painting I ever did on paper. I had been wanting to try it uh, but hadn't managed to get around to it yet so uh, I, I actually quite enjoyed it. I, um, I, I, I don't paint a ton. I don't have a lot of time to paint with uh, still having kids and lots of sports and stuff like that but um, uh, so it, it, <laughs> it does take me a while um, but uh, I 
uh, I do paint enough that I'm getting uh, starting to have storage problems because I always had painted on canvas prior to this and uh, so I do like the idea of using um, the sugared peach sorry <laughs> A look at it. Uh, I do like the idea of using some of this, uh, some paper, just to make storage a little bit better. So um, covered petunia all in sugared peach and now we're just going to base coat her eyes and I'm using lamp black for that. So let me just get a little bit more here on my palette. Oh, it's being sticky. So another thing about me, about painting, is I love to paint eyes. Uh, eyes are my favorite part of any painting, generally. I love the fact that uh, it's, like people have always said, you know, the eyes are the window to the soul. <laughs> Which, well, I, that sounds really cheesy, but let's be honest. Um, I, I I kind of agree. That's where you see a lot of personality and, um, you know, just that's sort of where you see the life in a lot of uh, animals and people is, is in the eyes. So they need to be represented really well. Um, and while I'm still learning all the ways to make the eyes um, sort of glow and, and um, showcase that personality i uh i do they're they're definitely definitely my favorite part of any painting and i tend to do the eyes almost first every single time i'll do the eyes um, because i find when i'm painting um if the eyes aren't done everything just looks super weird and creepy to me that's like this soulless um <laughs> weird little animal without eyes uh, so i always tend to do the eyes first um yeah so i've done the the pupils in black and now I'm just going to go through and do some of Petunia's markings. So she has lots of markings um, sort of in her head and around her uh, her snout and eyes. Um, so we're going to do those next. And I'm going to go back to my oval brush here just because the areas are fairly big. And I don't want to take forever doing it and we're going to add depth and the fur quality to them later so right now they just sort of need to be blocked in um i had no idea well i do now but in the beginning i didn't really know that this was called base coating um that their first layer was base coating i just put painting <laughs> but put the paint on and didn't really think about the fact that all these different layers could be called different things i just slapped them on and called it a day and uh what i did a lot of when i first started painting was making a lot of mistakes and i still make all of the mistakes i think we all lots of people do and um they're not and i've i've never but i've never given up on a painting so when i've been painting something and it's not working out or i I don't like the way it's looking or the color looks funny I almost never ever throw that painting away or paint over and start again um, and I think I do that because I'm very stubborn <laughs> very very stubborn and I hate giving up on things sometimes um, but I also do it because it's really good to learn from it so I learn a lot from all these errors right especially because i was so new to painting i'm so new to color and and you know what blends well and what colors go well together and and all of that that if i just keep painting over what i painted before um i can sort of start to see um how colors might affect each other or how um how I'm going to 
um, I don't know, control more what, what's there. Uh, and I can't, I can't figure that out and I can't learn it if I don't take that time to make those mistakes. So, um, yeah, I just, uh, I feel like it's a really good part of the learning process is, is to not always just give up if something isn't working, uh, is to keep trying to correct it and learn it. Uh, and, and, and I think that it's kind of important if, especially if you are self teaching yourself, there are so many good videos out there. There's so many people I love to see on YouTube now that I've, I've discovered and, and creative innovations, you know, that, um, you know, there's so much to learn and there's so many people to learn from and so many different techniques and you know, you can, it's just nice to be a part of that and to find your own sort of little way of doing things, what works for you, taking what somebody else has figured out and, and, uh, and taught you and, and making it your own and making it into something that, that you can do. Um, and I think that's been a really nice part of the process. Um, my mom's an amazing painter and uh, she has taught me so much. I every time I do a painting I send her I send her you know shots in between you know in different phases of where I'm at and, and she'll give me advice on uh, what colors you know I should do if proportions are off um, and I think it's really great to have sounding boards so like um, I know um, the Creative Innovations Facebook group has been great for that. It's kind of really nice to be able to um, have people that you can go to and say hey you know what this looks off to me you know this this doesn't seem right but I can't quite figure out where I've gone wrong. You know, what is it that I'm missing? Um, and they'll help you. It's the one thing that's really great about a, the community um, of artists is they're always so willing to help each other and to share their knowledge. And I think it's if you can find a group, um, a Facebook group, a local you know, a local group that meets in person. If you can find anything like that, that will help you um, learn how to learn how to paint and learn to make yourself better. You know, even the best artists, I think, um, need that. And uh, I, I, you know, I, I really, really encourage people to to find a sounding board, a sounding board of others. Um, to, uh, to, you know, to show them, show their work and to, to ask for advice. I mean, there's always something that we can learn. This is my, I love doing this. I think it's hilarious that the pig markings, um, gives him eyebrows <laughs> like a person. I think it's just hilarious. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it's just, it just makes me giggle, um, that he's, that he has that he has eyebrows. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna put a little bit around his eyes because he does have um, some some markings that are, are sort of close to his eyes. I haven't put in the, the whites of the eyes around, around the pupil yet, but we'll get there. Um, I do tend on occasion to skip around while I'm painting and go. I'll finish one area and go, oh yeah, I didn't quite finish that one over there and end up having to go back and forth. So <laughs> I know some people like to work in one spot and, and, uh, and, you know, finish that up and move over and some people move around and I, I do a little bit of both. Um, I, I, I tend to, after I've gotten a few things down is work mostly in one spot. Um, and then I will, realize as I'm doing that that I missed a spot over there or missed a spot over there and have to go back to it. Uh, so um, I'm just, I'm just, it, it's hard for me to get out of the habit. I know a lot of artists will do one layer and they'll do all the colors of one layer and then 
all the color, all the color of the second layer and the third layer, and and, and they'll move around the painting as they do it. But I, I can't always do that. Uh, I find that I will get confused. <laughs> um, uh, I will get, uh, it just starts to look off to me and it, it's like I have to, I want this one spot to be perfect before I move on. But that just ain't gonna happen. Um, so, and I, I have a hard time remembering that. So, um, yeah. So now we're gonna do um, some of the nose and inner ear. And I'm using Wild Berry and Snow White for that. changing my water when I'm supposed to change my water too. Um, so yeah, so we're just going to take some Snow White and about a third of that with the Wild Berry. We've got a nice pinky color. I love this Wild Berry color. I've been using it like crazy lately. Um, yeah, um, I, I do that a lot. I find that I, I find a color I like and I just go crazy with it and I, I find a way to incorporate it into all my all my paintings for a little while until I find my next favorite color. Um, but I do like this wild berry because it's not a real strong red and it makes, you know, it is definitely a pink and it makes a, just a lovely different shades of peach, uh, sorry, of pink. And uh, I, I, I just really like that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. We'll do the snout here. Now you might notice that I'm not like perfect with my lines. I'm not staying perfectly within all my lines. And that's not a big deal. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, especially when you're doing animals, is that animals um, have so many very variations in their skin and their fur that um, it doesn't really matter. Everything's gonna blend into each other in the end. Everything is gonna sort of overlap and you know work work off of each other. And um, I think that uh, you know you'll see it come together as you go and you'll see how little that matters like when you're mixing two colors uh, I have a habit of not always mixing enough of a color and having to mix more and it's so hard to get the exact same shade um, but when I'm working with animal paintings uh, I don't care about that because honestly think about hair think about skin. there's so many different variations in that that um, it, it, it doesn't matter if it matches perfectly. It actually adds to it if it's not perfect uh, with, it, with every time. So that is the first step. That's all the base coating. Just give me one moment and we will carry on. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, anyway, I just thought I'd show you, just in case you haven't seen, this is what we're painting today. So this is Petunia and that's how she's gonna look in the end, hopefully. Um, yeah, so let's continue. Like I said earlier, I sometimes forget to do a part, and I did in this case, which is just the rest of Petunia's snout. So, like I say, I did. I had to re. I had to get make some more of the pink color. It's not exactly the same, and it's not even going to matter in the slightest bit at the end. Um, which is one of the reasons I love painting animals is um, it's so easy to play with your mistakes and to and to find a ways around them. It uh, there's a, there's still just so many things you can do. So uh, yeah, here we go. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually start on the fur. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a right brush. Um, this is an an oldie, uh, but I really like it. <laughs> So um, 
I'm gonna use this rake brush and not a lot, not a ton of water. I mean, there's some on there, but not a ton. I don't actually use um, a paper towel or a towel to, to take a lot of the water off because um, I just, I don't need, don't need to, uh, to get it that dry. Anyway, um, so I'm gonna use a rake brush. I'm gonna use desert sand. So I'm just gonna pull it through and get a bunch on here. Now, one thing that is really, really important when you're painting an animal is to follow the direction of hair growth. So I had a, um, a picture that I found online on, I believe it's Pixabay, and that was one of the first things I did was really pay attention to the direction of fur growth because it, it makes a huge difference. Um, if you don't, everything just looks kind of off. Now, that's not to say that everything should be in a, it be perfect. So while the, the direction of the fur is going up and out here on the face, um, it doesn't mean I want like a lines that do this, or I don't want perfect, I don't want like a perfect line, fan lines with my brush. Um, that just makes it look really, really um, unnatural. So instead, I'm going to do lots of short little strokes. So hopefully you can see this well. See how they're just, they're really, really short. And I'm, I overlap up some and I move my brush around quite a bit. So I'm not just going one row, another row. They're actually moving, I'm actually moving my brush around quite a bit. So you might feel like, you know, why, why would I use the rake brush if I'm basically just painting over everything? Well, the nice thing about the rake brush is you're not painting over the entire under layer. Um, things are always going to be peeking through and that's what we want. Um, like I was saying before, animals have so many different variations in their fur um, that you actually want to see all the different layers. So all the different layers give you all the depth in the picture. So you can see, um, you it just lets you see everywhere that, yeah, it just, it, it gives you, uh, it doesn't make it look so one dimensional is what I'm trying to say. Um, it, it gives it, um, a shape to the face instead of it just looking like someone just drew something quick on there. It actually gives you layers and that was one of the first things I, I really learned when I was painting is I had never picked up a paintbrush before about two years ago ever ever except for when I was a kid in school and I remember I used to get so upset and so frustrated when I was painting or, or drawing as a kid. I remember I was so envious of friends and stuff that <clears throat> could just pick up a pencil and draw something and I used to think, why can't I do that? And it's because I understood things I didn't, oops, sorry, that I didn't understand. And they just sort of naturally understood the, how, how these things like depth made attention. And what I've really noticed myself doing more and more since I started painting, especially painting um, wildlife and sometimes people is I, I actually quite spend time really looking more at, at the animals and at people and really seeing, you know, sort of how they're, how, how they're made up, right? So if I look at an animal, I, I don't just look and go, oh yeah, it's a pig. You know, he's sort of white and pink, little brown on him. I, I actually pay attention to how how the fur really is is made how he's how he's made up does he you know um what colors actually is the skin underneath the fur right and if i was to brush my hands through the fur you know how how different is that right how different is each little 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 piece of fur you know, what is it made up of? What sort of different depths and colors and, and you know, how does the light shine off of it? And that sort of thing. 
and I never really thought it was that kind of a person that would pay that kind of detail to things. Um, but I, I, I really have started to really pay attention to, to that <clears throat> and it's made quite a bit of a difference. So yes, you'll see that I'm going over other layers. So yeah, so I'm using the desert stand to go over all the light color areas, excuse me, <clears throat> of petunia. And you'll see that I've kind of gone over some of the brown. And that's what I want to do. Because we don't want, in the end there, just to be a hunk of brown here and pink there and, and you know, white and purple, white and pink here. And, and you, they, they should all have like a nice transition between each other. That's what we're looking for in the end. So like you can see here um, in the original, uh, you can see how all the hair, all the fur sort of it is layered on top of each other. There's no definite hard lines. Um, so that's that's what we're, we're going for. You'd never, you know, very rare, unless with a short, maybe a really short haired animal, you might notice more defined um, lines. But not, not with most. With most, there's always going to be these little tiny furs or these little things that sort of pop out from from the different areas. Here we go. We're getting there. That's not a thing. I, the other thing I like about it is because it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> so I don't have to, you know, every layer that builds on top of another one, you're, you're, cleaning up you're making it better you're you know you are um making it a little bit i mean right now it just <laughs> i don't look very pretty we're kind of getting into the old ugly stage as we like to say um but every layer builds on each other right and while that's true with a lot of painting i find it especially true with animals that um you need everything Every layer has to build on on the one before it, and and set up the one the next one. Um, so I think that um, yeah. So you, you don't have to you don't have to be perfect because you can use all the layers afterwards to hide any imperfections you've done. And again, animal's fur is not perfect. It is not in these these beautiful animals may look like they have these beautiful lines. He's got some nice little sort of stripes in his inside his his ear here. Um, they may look like it's all perfect and everything, but it's not. <laughs> um, and and that's that's what makes them so beautiful, so unique, that that's what we do here, um, is just build over and over on top of these different layers and it, it just comes out uh, looking very, very realistic, very natural. So we've done that, I'm just going to, we're going to start doing, um, sort of going over the darker areas again. And this time I'm going to use raw umber. So you know, I I, I said I don't use my um, um, like paper towel and stuff or to dry off my brush a lot. And you'll notice that yeah, I do dip it and do get my brush wet. It's not it's not uh, not very wet. I don't dip it really frequently, and like. Like my brush has hardly any water in it, um, and again, I find that works so much better um, with painting fur. So we're just going to do the armor. We're going to go and do um, sort of the some of the darker areas and start laying some groundwork there. And again, you got to remember to follow the direction of the fur. And again, I just love <laughs> these eyebrows. <laughs> they just they crack me up. Um, and it makes me think of like a, you know, a funny old man that, you know, just needs them trimmed. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we're just going to do that and we're going to keep remembering the direction for, 
of the fur and the growth pattern. You can see it's starting to take on a little bit more of, um, of a soft fur quality. And again, you see, I'm just going back into it and it's going to make me use a, 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 a fair bit more paint than maybe I might normally um, with other types of painting. Um, but again, it just, it, it really helps with um, with that natural look. Right? If I was using, if I was using more water, it would be way more transparent, which in some cases we will do. We'll make it a little bit more transparent. But in general, um, that's not, not what I want with this, with this type of fur. So again, they're just short, short, quick strokes. Um, and they sort of, you, you sort of flick, you sort of pick your, pick your paintbrush up as you go. So you're sort of flicking it up um, to get, to get those wispy edges on it. I'm going to keep going with this. Again, they all sort of overlap and you kind of move around just so that you're not, you know, it's not, it's not too deliberate at this point again. Um, yeah. So we're going to keep going. I'm using a new camera, so I'm not I'm trying to watch it to make sure that I don't lose anybody. Hopefully, I don't lose anything. Now, this time, I know the fur direction goes this way, but I'm actually going to pull it this way a little bit because I want to start getting some of that transition um, into the lighter color, and it just sort of helps gives those wisps. Um, I sometimes also put my brush sort of on a, on the side, like this, so it's going like that instead, um, and I like to do that, I find it, again, helps with that wispier look. And we're going to put some along the side of the face here. This, we're doing it here because we want to define the edge of the face. And otherwise it looks like he just kind of blends into his neck. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm going to keep going. And this right here is a perfect example of me just sort of going too fast and being lackadaisical and I'm just gonna do get my get a brush and some clean water and I'm just gonna if you do it quick enough you can erase the majority of it going wrong to the point where you don't even know you did it or at least it's not. It's much easier to clean up later. It's more what I keep my, my uh, <laughs> more what I keep my paper towel around is to fix my mistakes. All right, almost done with this. Just a little bit more around the eyes. See, just have to go around the snout here because this fur. So this part is just around. So this is the snout and sort of up here, and then this is the actual fur working around around the snout. If you ever do this, and you're you've lost your lines you can always go back through you can always get your wait for it to dry and get your tracing paper back out and go back and redraw your lines if you need to um, sometimes that that will really help mm 
So I am going to, let's see here. Yeah, so I'm gonna just go back in here with my raw umber that I was using and just darken up the snow a little bit more. Just to give it a little bit more. There. We're going to actually take my little round brush here and I'm going to take a little bit of raw umber and just a touch of the black to darken it up. And I'm going to draw in those snow markings. So like I said, if you've lost them, you have no idea where they are supposed to be anymore. You can get out your tracing paper and go back over them. Um, honestly, I'm just I'm just sort of eyeballing this myself, and just sort of lightly putting the back in. So again, there's not a lot of water on here. I'm just lightly going through it and adding these markings in. tend to hold these brushes like a pencil. <laughs> and I know a lot of people hold very are very fine, they hold them from farther away, but I, I have to hold it like a pencil. Otherwise I just don't have enough control um, on it. I, I'm not the steadiest by any means, uh, so <laughs> I find I kind of have to do this. Um, yeah, so we're just sort of redefining the snout. And if we didn't put uh, these lines in here and later we're putting in um, some highlights uh, on it and stuff, it would look really flat. It would, it would just look like a big circle in the middle of the page. You wouldn't see, uh, you wouldn't have much definition. It wouldn't really look like a snout. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a funny step, but it's a necessary step. And it's going to look not very good when we first do it. It's just going to look, uh, yeah, it's not going to look the best. It's just going to look kind of weird, just like some lines. But you'll see them take, take shape and add to it as we go. I'm gonna let those dry up a bit because we hardly use any water. It doesn't take any time to dry at all, which is nice. Um, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I am going to use, this is where I start to use some watery mixtures. So I'm just taking a little bit of this raw umber and I'm using quite a bit of water. So I don't know, uh, I'm sure most of you uh, know what floating is. So it's probably quite similar to a float mixture um, where it's mostly water with just a bit of color. And I'm going to put in the, uh, the nostrils with this. I'm just going to let that be for now. And Petunia just has these, they sort of look like <laughs> one part of a quotation mark. Over her nose for her nostrils. I haven't. I'm not making them really dark at this point, um, just because I got to do more work on this now with the pink. And um, half the time when I do that, they just they sort of get overridden anyway a little bit. I just kind of want to get get the idea of them in there, and we'll darken them up in a few minutes. So now that the snout lines are dry, 
I am going to make um, a watery uh, black mixture. So again, I'm just going to take a little bit of water, black, and a little bit of water. And I am basically floating over these lines. And I'm just going to go over them like that. Oh my goodness, I'm throwing my stuff around. So I'm just going to go over them. process. Every little bit helps. All right. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use uh, this mixture we did with the the brown and the black, the sorry, the brown, umber and the black. We're just going to make it a little bit wetter, not quite as wet as, as we had with the other two, but a little bit wetter. And I'm actually going to go in to this line right here in the, where the inner ear is. And I'm just going to define it a little bit. It won't be quite so harsh later, um, but we just want to make sure that, that there is an idea of two separate parts of the ear. So that's what we're doing there. I'm just going to let this finish drying up. And we're just going to do a little bit more on the nose in a sec. Um, while we're waiting, I'm just going to put, I'm just going to grab something. Okay, just want to get some clean water and I'm just going to set this aside for a moment. I'm actually going to make, we're going to work some more on the, the snout and to do that we're going to make a few different versions of the pink. So we need our wild berry and our white, our snow white, and we're just going to make few different versions of pink here so we're gonna want one that is almost all wild berry with just a bit of white okay we're gonna want one that's about, about half and half And then one that's mostly white, with just a little bit of pink. You can play with these combinations too. Um, they don't have to be perfect. Um, you just kind of want three different shades of pink going from dark to light. This is sort of a semi-realistic painting. Um, of a pig so it's not it's not what some people call hyper realistic where it's perfect rendition and and you know it's like a photograph um, but it, it is fairly realistic we just added some some fun things to it so uh, things like the exact fur color doesn't have to be perfect um, so it's a little bit it's a little bit more fun it's a little bit more playful um, so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna grab um, some back to my sugared peach from the beginning and I'm gonna make another watery mixture. Like I say, I don't generally make a lot of, uh, use a lot of water in my painting, um, but I'm gonna make another watery mixture like we did um, when we went over, um, over the lines here. I'm actually gonna go over just the pink side of those lines with my sugared peach and it's like a, it's a very watery mixture and I'm just going over this sort of where those lines are and on the outside of the of the snout with it and just sort of just sort of softens it uh, sort of softens it up a little bit for us which is nice um, now we've done that so now we're gonna play with the rest of the snout, so the inner snout. The first thing to do is this area up here is going to be the darkest around this this snout, um, and then it's just gonna it's just gonna change throughout it. So I'm gonna get 
a little bit of water here because this this mixture is a little bit waterier than I normally do and that is because um, I want to actually blend it on the canvas okay so that's why this is we're going a little bit darker uh, sorry a little bit wetter here um, I'm gonna continue this down I'm gonna grab the next color and it's just gonna go in and we're just gonna I'm just sort of I'm putting moving my brush in little circles here around the edges so that I can get uh, uh, blended in a little bit in between okay and I went just a little bit under this nostril and now I'm gonna grab the last color the lighter color and it's gonna go through here and again, it's going to just need it to blend a little bit around the nostril. I want to blend it in a little bit up here. Like this. I'm going to do a little bit in the middle here. Now this part of it can come to a little down to a little bit of personal preference I should say so you just don't want it to all be one flat pink color so play with it again I like I say I like to sort of play with it I'm just gonna take little bits of the different different shades here and I'm just gonna go through the nose the little snout and just add different shades throughout the whole thing so it's not just one flat color yeah. see it's actually quite quick and easy to do I actually uh, when I'm looking at, when I'm painting something, a uh, portion of something that's a little bit flatter, so it's not like fur, um, I do this quite a bit. Blend right on the canvas, and I love the way it looks. I think it's, uh, it's just, it's just so much more fluid. It gives you so much room to play, and I kind of, I kind of really like that. that looks pretty good and again if as it dries if as you do your painting you're like you know what I need to to maybe change that up a bit that's easy that's the nice thing about this kind of painting you can just go in there whenever you want and change it all up it's really really easy um, I'm not really gonna um, clean my brush off but I'm just gonna grab a little bit more white to put sort of right up here this is yes and I, I will use my finger sometimes to blend um, I generally use uh, the ring finger um, because it's uh, it'll give you your softest touch and I just sort of sort of blend it in here that's just sort of where a little bit of highlight um, on the nose here where it's just gonna be a little bit softer and light all right, now we're just going to get our rake brush back out and I'm just going to go back in and do a little bit more of the fur here. So I'm going to stroke up this way and you get this nice you know, wispy edges, and I'm going to stroke back down the other way so it's not flat in one spot. And I'm going to do the same on the inside of this ear here um, because they've always got little hairs in there. Um, yeah, so that's the next, that's that step. Uh, let's move on to the next step. I'm going to do some more work here on the face and the body. Continue with a rake brush. I use the rake brush a lot. Um, 
with fur. I use it a lot to do a lot of the sort of the base layers in the first few um, uh, the first few first few layers of, of the fur and then near the end I'll get in um, another deep more of a detailed brush and, and uh, try to sort of define some areas a little bit more. Yeah. So we are going to use the burnt umber again. Which I think I need some more of. Probably drying out a little bit. I'm really bad at uh, I know a lot of people use spray bottles and stuff to keep their paint wet. I'm really bad at that. I never remember to do that. Uh, so I try to not put too much uh, paint on my palette so I'm not I'm not wrecking it um, by leaving it out uh, and drying out. Um, this is actually going to be uh, a little bit waterier than the last couple coats. Um, just because I do want it to be a little bit more transparent. So what we're going to do is go over um, quite a bit of the face. We're just going to just do, um, but we're not covering nearly as much as we did in the last when we put the desert sand over. Okay, so we're just, and I, I'm barely touching the canvas. It's really light. Sometimes I'm gonna not even touch it. I'll do the stroke and no paint will go down. And that's okay, because I'd rather, um, oops, sorry, bump the camera. I would rather not get get it down than, uh, than put too, too much or and especially with the rake brush, you know, you can get sort of, and I'll do one, you can kind of clump it. And I don't really want to do that uh, with this at this point. So I'm just doing it light. If you did do too much, again, it's not a big deal with this kind of painting. Honestly, um, it, it really isn't. You, there's lots of opportunities to play. There's lots of opportunities to fix something if you're not happy with what you did when you do this kind of painting. It, it, there, there really is. That's why I like it. Because I, most of the time I don't feel like I know what I'm doing and I'm just making it up whenever I, pull, whenever I start painting. But that's okay. Because um, we learn through experimentation, right? We learn, you know, what works. You know, I've already said that and... and um, it, I would, you know, rather make a bit of an error and find a new way to do something than, you know, just keep painting the same way every single time. So see, here, I, I, I put my brush too flat, right? So I get no wisps. And that's, again, see, I'm just going to go back over it. I could even get out my handy dandy paper towel, blot it, and do it again. So that's something you'll learn with me. <laughs> How to maybe work well with your errors because that's what I do. I make errors and I have to figure them out. So I'm again, I'm not, not covering everything. I'm just, this isn't um, a large part of the, um, um, the pig's coloring, right? It's not a large part of Petunia's coloring um, is this. See, I've made it a little bit too wet. So one of the things you can do, my mom taught me this, is um, take your brush and just put it on the edge of the folded, and it, it just it just pulls it'll pull out the the water a little bit if you've got too much water on your brush. Um, but yeah, so I'm just just playing with it a little bit. It's not a large part of our coloring, so I don't want it to to overtake everything. But I do want to get get some down. So that's probably all we need with that. We're gonna actually move on to using uh, some Fesh Uh I absolutely love this color for, <laughs> for, um, for doing darker areas, for shading and all that kind of, I actually, I really like it. It works so well 
for that. Um, yeah, I, I, oops, got the wrong color. I, uh, I use it quite, quite a fair amount. Remember I was saying how I find a color and I use it like crazy? Yeah, this is one of those colors that I use quite a bit because what I find is it really changes depending on the color you put underneath it. Yes, all colors do that. But I really find that I can put it over almost any color um, as a float and it, it just, it makes, it, it just, it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't always look like this sort of brown color. It really does make a color just look like a darker version of itself quite frequently when I, when I use it that way. Um, so I do, I do use it quite, quite a lot. I quite, quite enjoy it. So we're just going to go over the dark areas. I'm just going to darken it up a little bit. And I don't want this to be transparent at all. So and it looks like, again, it looks like I'm, I'm literally going over all the colors I've already done. And because it's the rake brush, it's not, right? And you, you can be very cautious of how you do it. Um, and uh, what, I, what I like is you can always do more, right? So if, if I haven't, if I've done, if I haven't done enough, I can always go back and add more. Um, and it, but again, with this type of painting, if you do too much, you just go back over it and it really because of all the variations and fur and stuff nobody will ever know just you you're the only one that'll figure that out that'll know that you painted the same spot 12 times by going back and forth between light and dark versions of it because you have to to get it to get it the way you want and that's that's okay it's it, you get you get there how you get there Just gonna keep layering these colors on top of each other. Deepening everything up and look real pretty in the end. Yeah. So you know Whoever's watching this, like I say, this is my first video, um, first tutorial. So please tell me, you know, tell me what you think, what you think you'd like to see different next time. Uh, hopefully going to make some more of these. Uh, yeah, and you know, tell me about what you're working on and what you enjoy. You know, is there something you'd like animal or something you'd like to see next? You know, I'd love to hear it and I'd love to see what you're working on. Um, and if you do paint Petunia, please send me a picture. I would love to see, love to see how, how it came out knitting. We're going to add some, oops, hair to the top of the head. That's going to look super cute when we're all done. And it won't just look like a line. <laughs> It'll look... Well, much better than a line. Again, we're just gonna. Oh, and I did it again. This ear is driving me crazy. So I'm, I'm gonna go on the side of my brush and just pull in a few wisps into the white. And you know what? I'm probably I'm gonna end up going back over those that white here. And I know it seems kind of funny to put in something, go over it. Put in something, go over it. But Again, it's all about those layers and it's all going to look good in the end. It's all going to look like it was all part of part of the master plan. <laughs> but work down here. water laugh. I'm just getting a bit too dry. It's okay. There. Okay. So 
I'm going to use a little round brush. Let's move this closer again. I keep hitting the my camera. So, oh, ha, wrong end. That's not going to work so well. All right. So what I need now is, yes, a watery mixture. I know. It sounds like I lied to you guys, doesn't it? I kept saying, I don't use watery mixtures. And here I am, I'm making a lot of watery mixtures. Well, sometimes I guess I'm a liar. <laughs> okay, I'm not a huge liar. Uh, let's go. We are going to use a little bit of burnt tubber and a little bit of desert sand. Boop. About half and half, I would say. And again, it's going to be watery. Maybe touch more desert sand. There we go. And we're going to use this to do some highlighting on the nose. It's kind of like a float. I almost feel. Now, if you don't know what I keep saying, it's like a float. If you don't know what a float is, that's okay. I didn't know for the longest time either. I knew what I was doing. I just had no idea it was called a float. Floating, when you paint, is essentially you're, all you're doing is putting a watery layer over top. Basically the paint is floating on the surface. It's not, you know, you're not getting it into the fibers of, the, of your canvas or your whatever. You're, you're just sort of floating it over top and it's quite transparent and all you're really doing is um, is you're either well you use, usually use it you're either highlighting or shading something that's usually what you're doing when you're when you're floating um, you just and it looks again right now you're probably looking at this going oh why would she do that that looks super weird. It won't look weird when we're done. <laughs> Much better. And what's great, the other thing you can do is you can take a mop brush and I just sort of gently move it around. Like this. Uh, it just sort of softens it all up for you. Now, we're going to go back to our rake brush. Got a little trusty rake brush, which I will use all the time. And we're going to go back into the desert sand, just flat, regular desert sand here. We're going to add, we're going back in. We're going to add some more light back into everything. I know, we just got rid of it and now we're putting it back. That's okay. That's how you get this layered look. That's how you get this soft feathery look for to the fur. Right? It's how we blend everything and have a nice transition between the different areas. And right now, I can tell it went a little bit too heavy in here. Doesn't matter. Like I said, doesn't matter. Because we can always clean it up any way we want. Right? I'm going to actually go into this a little bit, making sure that it's still sort of in the same fur growth direction. Right? Okay. This, this layer, even though it's not watery, is more like uh, that burnt umber layer that we put on underneath here. Um, it's not, it's a little bit more sporadic. It's not covering as much, right? It's just sort of adding a new lighter layer to what we've done. I'm gonna go through the eye 
these are gonna go. Well, see, I went a little heavy there. Doesn't matter. Clean it up when we can. And we're just gonna go right in to this. Helps us with that nice transition between markings and the body. I'm gonna put some some hair there. He's got some nice soft fur there. Put a little bit on the inside of the ear. <laughs> now I actually can't see the camera. I want the camera's recording with my setup right now. So I really hope <laughs> that you guys can see what I'm doing well. And that my fat hand ain't getting in the way of what you need to see. Um, I'm actually, let's see here, that's looking good. All right, I'm actually going to make it a little bit waterier for a moment. I don't want to keep a lot of water, I just want it to be quite light. And I'm going to barely touch in here, in this part of the body, just because I want a few lighter strands throughout the body so it's not so dark, or else it's not going to have very much depth to it. It's just going to look like a big dark patch, even though we've used a couple different shades of uh, brown. That's the easiest way to describe it. I want there to get a little bit of lightness in there. Same along here. Just so it's not so, so dark. The thing that's really easy to do, especially with something like this, is to, um, and I do it all the time, is to forget that if I don't give some separation between the head and the ear, it just looks like this big ear comes down here or this big ear comes down here, when in reality, the head is right here, right? Um, so we just need to make sure we don't lose that. And sometimes all you need to do for something like that is just to add, again, a little bit more dimension to it. There we go. That should do for now. Okay, so we are going to, I'm going to put some new sugared peach down because this is dried out, like I said before, I'm terrible about. And we need to get some pinky peachy back into our piggy here. So again, good old right brush comes out. And we're just gonna go back over the face. You don't, um, I remember when I first started doing this sort of thing, I remember thinking, why do I just keep going over and over the same areas, over and over with different colors, like how many layers am I going to do? Um, well, I used to watch people, uh, watch videos and stuff on YouTube, and I'd be like, I just don't get it. But I've really learned what a difference it makes when I feel like I'm, I'm covering everything, but you're really not. You know, each layer builds on each other and each color builds on each other and it just wouldn't look the same if you just, you know, went straight in with something and and then tried to throw in a few highlights here and there. It just would not, it would not work. It would not look the same. And and I think, uh, <laughs> I think it's really interesting how that, how different that is and how, what a difference it makes. 
So we're the experiment with layers, right? If you're looking at something and you're thinking, well, that doesn't look anything like what I thought it would look like, you know? Um, you just start playing with, you play with different brushes. That's a big one. Um, because I think I use brushes <laughs> when I, because I, when I watch other people paint and I think I use brushes sometimes way differently than anybody else would use them and for something nobody else would use it for. Uh, so, um, and it's just because I've played around and I like the way something looks using that. So, um, I think, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe everybody uses them more or less the same way, but, um, I know, uh, that I've definitely changed the way I do things sometimes because of, oh, I'll try a different brush and, and be really surprised with how, how it works, how, how much I like it, um, with how, how it does that, it does something and, and I'll start using it more and more and trying different things with it and uh, yeah and then I, I, I just all of a sudden I'm doing doing something a whole new way and I'm liking it way better. Um, what's really something you should know about me I guess, well, another thing to know about me is uh, I'm super super cheap. <laughs> My friends call me thrifty, <laughs> to be polite, but really, I'm pretty cheap. Um, so when I first started painting, I didn't know if I was going to enjoy it. I didn't know if I could paint. And really, the first few things I painted were just atrocious. Um, and uh, uh, Bob Ross would be so sad if he saw what I did to, to some landscaping type and, and mountain and, and all those sorts of things. He would just be so sad. Um, but... <laughs> Um, I, I didn't want to invest a lot because I, I've, you know, I've had lots of hobbies and I love to craft and, and I just didn't want to spend a whole bunch of money on something that maybe I wasn't going to enjoy or stick with for very long. So I, I ended up using, <laughs> probably used, um, brushes for things that, that I shouldn't have I used. I, I, I didn't want to buy a lot of paint and I still don't buy a lot of paint, to be honest with you. Um. I, I'd rather use less, less colors and have to mix a whole bunch <laughs> than, than just buy pre-mixed colors. And one of the reasons I like that, actually, actually really, really enjoy doing that now, is the fact that um, you get so many variations. So like I say, if I'm, and there's a lot of mixing in this one other than the pink, but um, what I'll find is I'll, I'll um, because it, animals are, are their, their fur is so um, varied that it's actually quite nice because you never get a, um, the same color twice. Uh, you can get close, um, but you get all these different, different things that may, it just looks so much more realistic and you find all these different beautiful combinations of colors that I, I never would have found if I had just kept going out and buying pre-mixed bottles of paint. Um, so uh, when I frequently, if I do a painting, um, you'll find I don't use a ton of different colors, right? So you'll, if you paint along with any of my painting or buy any of my patterns or, or anything, you'll, you'll find that it probably isn't a ton ton of colors. Um, and same with brushes. There isn't, you don't need 20 brushes to do it because I don't want to have to go get 20 brushes to do a painting. So, um, you know, I might, uh, I tend to use a lot of the same brushes, a lot of the, the same colors and just do it in different ways as I paint. Um, just because I, I, I enjoy it. Um, and I'm cheap. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get out of that. I'm trying to go, okay, you know what? Things are worth spending the money on, but yeah, I, I tend to play a little bit with, uh, I'd rather play with something and try to make something I have work than just go and buy something new. So, um, yeah, <laughs> you might notice that. Um, I'm just going to add a few more lights highlights here and ear I'm 
generally a talker. I haven't talked this much all at once in a while. So yeah, so we're getting there. Piggy is starting to look good. This is where we really start to lighten things up on, on our little piggy here. I'm going to go in. I'm going to start to add some white. So I'm going to add white. White's such a powerful color. So <clears throat> um, if you find it too light, you can always and, and, and white really, lots of times, isn't used <laughs> um, just as a color to paint with, unless you're using it on eyes um, or real specific highlights. Um, you don't use a lot of pure white. Um, so as you can see, I've gone and I've made a mixture here that's almost all white, which is the tiniest, 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 tiniest hint of the wild berry just so it's not, you know, a deep, just such a stark white. Okay. I'm just going to go in again. One more layer here. We're getting near the end of this white. pretty thick when I was mixing it. I know I'm not supposed to mix with my brushes, but I do. <laughs> I do all the time. Yeah. So here we go. Again, we're using the direction of the fur growth. They're short, wispy. Wispy bits of fur. You know, this is actually the first time I've repainted the same picture. I've never painted the same picture more than once. So this is the first time, so, uh, which is, which is kind of neat, actually. I'm usually a, one of those people that just likes to run and move to the next project and try something else, then, then rehash something I've already done. But, uh, Oh no. See what we did there. Oh, that's just not gonna work, is it? We're just gonna get a nice clean wet. And now we're just gonna go like that. I'm just gonna let that little area dry a little bit before I go back in with the close. Might not look like we're getting close, but we are. Yeah. Just going through, adding a little bit here and there. Again, just looking to transition and soften things and layer them up. Try to give it a more natural look. It's very hot right now. All my windows are open. So 
you can hear anything that's going on outside. Piggy is coming along good at this point. Apparently, my camera turned off and I was talking away and I had no idea. Um, so I believe what we missed or what you guys missed was, um, I actually thought that Piggy needed a little bit more pink back in him. So what I did was I had taken the uh, previous light pink color that we had mixed and added a little bit more white and a little bit of the sugared peach just to give a nice peach color and I just used the right brush like I had all through here um, just to just to give her give her a little bit more splash a little pizzazz a little more personality so and I'm much happier with that so all I did after that was I just worked in the nose a little bit more the snout a little bit more and I took my brush and I just sort of wiggled it around the outside of that pattern uh, sort of the the, the the patch there just so it wasn't like a, a harsh line just sort of straight line we didn't want it to be too look too perfect I'm gonna go back into where those nostrils were and if you've lost them completely which I always do I'm just gonna Add them back in there. Like that. Just gonna pop them back in. Yeah, that's better. Okay, that's much better. Let's see here. We're just playing with this, this burnt umber. Um, I'm just going to make a little bit more watery again and I'm going to go back into these highlights. And again, we're sort of just floating over these light ones that were there earlier. Um, just going back over them so they're not quite so light, not quite so stark. Just gonna pop them back in there. There we go, that's better. Go over those dark black, those dark lines that we used to paint the snow in. And I'm just going over, you'll see that I'm kind of making them bump out a little bit where the pink and the, the brown connect. Um, this is so. Um, yeah, just it, it gives it a more 3D appearance instead of it being too too dark, too flat there. If you do, if you sort of curve them out there, it makes it makes the nose more rounded in appearance. Okay, um, and again, I'm going to use that same round brush. I'm going to use some black, mostly burnt umber with just a little bit of black again, like we did earlier. And I'm just going to wet my brush a good bit and I'm just going to sort of float and deepen these shadows a little bit where I, where I think they need it. Right here. I think they would look better a little bit deeper there. A little bit. That's better. I'm also going to add, I think, right in here, I think he needs some more of the, the patch. Yeah. I might have to do a couple layers with this one um, just to darken it up, but we'll get there. I'm also going to 
use this darker color mixture here to be so clean my brush a little bit after mixing it there and I'm just gonna take it and I'm just gonna go through this area and I'm barely gonna touch it and I'm just gonna add and you'll, you'll hardly see it because it's not much different than the color that's there but I'm just gonna add some real gentle light lines that flick again we're flicking it up as we go through because what this will do is just add a little bit of dimension right here in the hair and that's all we're trying to do all right try we don't want it to be a flat look that's all we're doing okay and we're going to continue to do that throughout the fur all the dark areas we're just going to have this little bit of little strokes just throughout it just to add a little bit of depth a little bit of you know transition and more of a natural look you can put them into these white areas light areas a little bit too so that they blend in more but it is important right I know we've been doing layers and going over things and and change the, the length of the hair don't all do the same the same the same length of strokes uh, so again that's too uniform it doesn't look as natural and not perfect we don't want things to look perfect Bit through here. I'm getting there. Like I say, closer, closer. We're almost done. Okay. Now we're <laughs> have fun, and we're gonna do some more in these larger areas. The fun part's coming up here with the the liner brush and all the real fun little wispy bits. That really make. some flicks and some fun here nothing serious all right now I'm gonna take just white here and I'm just gonna go through just like I did in the dark areas and add some more defined hairs and this just gives it you know a little bit more of a you know sort of finished look I should say yeah it's not again you don't I, I'm not going in like fanning out and from one one place I got it moving it around a little bit uh, I do that because I don't I want to make sure I'm not doing sort of deliberate strokes right I want to make sure I'm playing a little bit more with this and not getting it too perfect looking so, yeah. so I'm just gonna keep doing this I 
just gives it some hilarious for for clumpy areas that are a little bit more natural. Like I say, when we're having fun with this one and it doesn't have to be perfectly natural looking, you know, we, <laughs> you know, there are some sort of natural rules we want to follow in some areas, right? Where we want to have fun, we want to play with this, we want to make it our own, it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, it, it just, but there's some things that you kind of want to do, like following the direction of the fur growth adding some deliberate strokes to give it a finished look at the end and it just sort of pulls it all together right it does make it a little bit more natural a little bit more realistic instead of just play um yeah and it just gives it a nice sort of finished look which is what we're hoping saying we're almost done but we really are this time I, I promise we're almost done <laughs> it's kind of like when you when you're on a road trip with your kids and you keep telling them you're almost there <laughs> you're almost there I'm just about made it don't keep asking uh, See it getting dry, too dry. Like I say, I don't use a lot, but you can tell when you do start to get dry. Too dry. It doesn't come out as soft. Huh. Definitely interesting trying to repeat something you've already done. Kind of neat looking at your original work and seeing how well you can match it. It's a good process. I like it. Definitely have to do this more often. Oh. Don't usually have this much time to paint all at once. All in one evening. This is pretty good for me. Yeah. So, right after we do this, we're just going to go in and clean up the eyes and the ears. Some of the dark areas finish that nice transitioning between the different fur growths if you notice you'll probably notice I'm just grabbing the, <laughs> the white straight from where the pink is and yeah there's probably gonna get a little bit of pink on it but again that just goes well with what I was saying with the you don't want every brush stroke to the exact same color all the time it's not not what we need when we, we do this kind of painting here. Everybody, every fur, piece of fur is different, right? Well, it all goes generally in the same fur growth direction. It still can overlap, it might twist a little bit, but even if it's going in that same direction. So yeah, so there's that. We're also going to take the white and we're going to go around the eye. Go way underneath the eye here like this. Just give it a nice, nice clean edge. Like that. I'm gonna go back to my black, just clean up the 
the pupil a little bit. Let's darken it a bit like this. Wait a minute, we'll add the highlights. Just wanna make this one a little bit wider. Yes, because it's a little bit too thin there. Oh, that's better. Perfect. All right. And while that's drying, we're going to take our liner brush and we're going to go into. Um, let's start with the. Ah. The raw umber. And when you're using your liner brush, this is when you do want a watery mixture. If you're, it's not, if there's not enough water on it, um, what you're going to get is you're, oh, you're going to get really choppy strokes. Um, so you want to get that brush good and good and wet and get it really loaded with paint. This is the one time I do use my paper towel quite a bit. with what my mom taught me. And put that there and just sort of get off the excess water after you've loaded and I'm going to go into the eyebrows I'm just going to do some nice light strokes Oops, it's a bit thick but that's okay yeah so this is where we're doing all our fine wispy hairs and sometimes you're going to do you're not even going to touch the canvas. You're, you're doing this so lightly that you're half the time you're, you're not even getting anywhere. Okay, so we're going to do a bunch of these. We're going to do them just throughout these, these areas here where there's transitions from light to dark or where we know there would be fine hairs like in the eyebrows. Uh, in the inner ear, like over here. Like that. There's always going to be a few stragglers along the top of the head. And you have to add these. This is what adds some personality, like the eyes. You gotta add these little strictly guys that sort of run off into different directions. They're they're very much part of it. Uh, they're gonna go up along the ear here. Oh, I gotta fix that. Just gonna go up along the ear. through the eyebrows. You can do as much or as little as you want of these. Um, I love doing this part. <laughs> it's, it's the fun part. This is where all it all starts to come together. Right? Who would have thought at the beginning when it was in those weird stages that it would start to look so adorable, right? No idea. Definitely need some chin hairs right under the snout. Mm -hmm. Add a few through here. here along the side of the face. So these hairs are the ones that don't always have to follow the rules. <laughs> okay, so these ones are the ones that uh, 
they can go off in some funny direction if they need to. Right? If you want. If you think one would look cute, just way off <laughs> to a different and a different pattern path, that's fine. Because these are the funny little hairs that just get out of get you out of nowhere. We know them. We've gone and done our hair and been like wanting to cut like one hair off just because it just won't go where you want it to. Although that would be a terrible idea. We kind of want to do it anyway sometimes. Right? So there's going to be lots of little hairs right along the snout. Okay. My camera just died. I had to plug it back in. So this is all we're going to do. It's like I said, we're going to go through with this light guy here. We're going to add some hairs where we think they need to be with the dark. Um, eyelashes are done the exact same way with the pig, though eyelashes curl down. Just so you know, they all come down like this. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a few down. Like so. Too thick with paint there. I'm just going to do a few down. Like that. We're going to go back. We're going to do the whole thing with a lighter color. Um, with, the, with the white. And um, with the pink. As well as um, we're going to do the same thing with um, on, on all those same areas. We're just adding to it. Uh, the only other thing we need to do is add our highlights, our eye highlights. This is what gives the piggy little, little bit of life there. So we just need to add a few little lights, highlights here. And I always like to add a thin line. I find that that helps too. That looks good. Like so. Okay. Uh, the only other thing that we'll do um, as we go here is I'm going to take that light, 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 light pink here. And it's going to be real watery. Okay, so I lost my recording there and I, I didn't know I had, so I apologize. But all I ended up doing um, was going through and adding, you know, lots of um, small lines in the dark and light lines in the same area, uh, including where the eyelashes are. Uh, the only other thing I did that you didn't see was using a little bit of that light pink that we had and very watery and just adding it right here on the inner side of both um, both eyes. It just sort of is like the lid. So yeah, so that's really all there is to it. Um, just go through and just add just lines. You know, just, just some definition and some light, light furry lines right where you think it just needs a little bit more. So that's all. Your petunia is done. Um, once you're happy with it, like I say, you can always go back through with any other color and you know add some, some more lines, some more definition in some areas using your rake brush again. Go over it as many times as you want alternating colors um, until, you, until you're happy with it. But um, I, I, think, uh, I, I, think, I think this version of petunia is done. So once you're done, don't forget to sign it. Put varnish on it, um, letting it dry, usually a few coats, let it dry in between, and uh, she's ready for you. So thanks so much again for, for um, watching and, sorry, participating in that. And uh, again, send me any questions you have. I'd love to see your paintings and uh, appreciate it. Thank you very much.